Hey, so sewers. Today, I'm going to be sharing my plans for sewing in 2023. Now, usually I have some goals or sewing resolutions, and this year I've decided to do things a little bit differently. I was talking to a friend of mine and he suggested having an overall theme for your year instead of trying to keep tabs on all these different resolutions and goals. And it's actually a great idea. And so I started thinking about what would my theme be for 2023 in regards to sewing. And I came up with trying new things and sewing from my stash. So he thought that was a great idea and suggested that my overarching theme be sewing adventures in 2023. Keep watching and learn about all the details. Now there is a lot of fabric in my stash that was just purchased because I like it. And as a result, I have varying yards of fabric and I have to figure out what I'm going to do with it and decide like, okay, I have two yards of this, what can I make with two yards? But I do have a bunch of fabric that I have bought in the last two years that I specifically had a pattern in mind when I went and bought the fabric. So that's what I'm going to be working on first from the stash is to use fabric that I've already got the pattern in hand and the fabric in hand. And all I have to do is cut everything out and get it sewn up. So the first one is going to be this gorgeous Achino fabric. This is a cotton sateen. This is a Japanese fabric. I've talked about it in my Japanese fabric haul. This is one of the fabrics I got at Leo 9. And I bought it to make this kind of kimono style jacket. And when I looked at the pattern, I looked at the view for B, which has a contrasting cuff and front band, and I didn't buy enough of this fabric. So you can see that the first yardage is over there on the bolt, and I went and bought enough to actually make the jacket this time. So that is definitely something I'm going to do this year because I love this fabric. I really wanted to make something the pattern is completely cut out. I actually went as far as to have the fabric all laid out on grain and I was putting my pieces on it and then realized that I didn't have enough. So that's definitely happening because it almost happened last year, but for the lack of fabric. The other patterns that are going to get made this year and probably sooner rather than later is this Vogue cape with a belt. So it's a belted cape. And I bought this gorgeous wool in from Mood when I was on my trip in New York. And I really need to sew this before it gets too warm again. Today it is in the 70s, even though we are in January here in Texas. Um, apparently nobody got the memo that it should be cold. So I'm hoping that the weather is gonna get a little bit cooler over the next few weeks and hopefully into February, because then it will feel more appropriate to be using wool and sewing with wool. It's a little bit warm in here today, but that is definitely going to happen. I love this fabric. I want to make this pattern and I haven't really sewn with very many Vogue patterns. So that's kind of a different thing as well as to try out Vogue patterns versus the other commercial patterns that I have sewn with in the past. Now the other pattern for sure I'm going to make is this, um, it's this raincoat material and it's a waxed cotton or treated cotton waterproof treatment. Um, it is 100% cotton. There's, there's a little bit of stretch in the weave, so that's nice. And I'm going to be making this short trench coat as a raincoat. And I even got purple buttons that match the fabric when I was in New York. So that's another thing that I really want to do, primarily because I do not have a raincoat. And the spring tends to be fairly rainy here in Texas. So I, I definitely want to get this made before we hit the rainy season so that I will have a nice new raincoat. And I love this fabric too. So that is another Vogue pattern that will get sewn this year. And then the other one that I absolutely must make is this Vogue wrap skirt with the handkerchief hem. My friend Jen made this. She really liked it. Um, maybe I'll get her to remake it and we can do a chat about that and our experiences sewing this pattern. The fabric I got is also from New York. This is linen and it is this really funky kind of mod. I think it is like an 80s fruit print. I don't know why, but it just kind of that grid back there just reminds me of like, I don't know, that 80s. 
I really, really like this fabric. My boyfriend actually spotted it first and he's like, that looks fun, you should get it. And then I needed to find a companion fabric because there are two different yardages in this version. And I found this cotton linen blend in the stripe, which matches this fabric perfectly. And the man at the cutting table at Mood kind of looked at me like, are you a little crazy? And you know, I really like prints and color and I think these fabrics look really great together. And I'm really excited about making this skirt because I just think it'll be really fun. And coming into the spring and going into the summer, this is going to be great fabric to wear. It's going to look fantastic with, you know, just like a tank top or a shell top. And I think I'm going to get a lot of wear out of this because this fabric is just going to be perfect for hot, humid days, which is pretty much all we have in the summer in Texas. There are a couple of other fabrics that I bought on my New York trip that I did not have a plan for, but I have an idea for. So this is a gorgeous cotton sateen. It is Pierre Cardin. It is made in Italy. I absolutely love this tropical print. It's so purpley and bright and vibrant. And I have this dress in my head that I want to attribute to Grace Kelly having worn. It's sleeveless. It kind of has a, you know, kind of fitted through the middle and then it kind of has a full skirt and a collar and buttons up the front. And I went looking for pictures and I found this one and this one. And I think I would like a dress that was kind of a combination of the two minus the waist. I have recently realized that the reason I don't like things with a waistband or at my waist is because my waist is right at the bottom of my rib cage. And it's just not comfortable to have something there. It just, it makes me feel like I'm, I'm being squeezed to death, even though I'm not, but it just, that's what it feels like to me. That's why I always prefer a lower rise on pants or just a lower waist in general on a skirt or a dress or a waistless dress. I tend to wear those more than anything else. So I'm kind of thinking maybe putting these dresses together and seeing if I have a vintage pattern somewhere or combining a couple of patterns and maybe tracing them off and making my own with princess seam lines that would kind of give the overall feel of the dresses that were shown in these pictures, but with a shorter length because I'm not very tall. I need like a knee length dress max. So that's what I'm thinking. Let me know what you think in the description below. And um, I'd, I'd love to know your thoughts. I, I don't know if this is crazy to think that I can do this. I have made my own patterns in the past. It's been quite a while, but I think I've still got that skill in there somewhere. And if I had a vintage pattern to kind of look at and play off of, that would probably help things out a little bit. The other thing, um, other fabric I got in New York, and I got, I got this one at Mood and I got this one at um, B&J Fabrics. It, this is another cotton sateen. It has a little bit of lycra in it, so there's a tiny, tiny bit of stretch in it. I, I'm thinking about making a dress out of this too. This would be one of these kind of like gathered on the side dresses. Um, I have a couple of Calvin Klein dresses that look like that. They zip up the back. And um, I think that would be really pretty. Plus with a little bit of stretch, it could be kind of fitted. And that would be fun for the summer and just kind of pretty. This is another gorgeous tropical kind of print. You can see I kind of had like a theme with uh, dress prints when I went to New York, but I do love both of these fabrics. I have, I think I have two yards of this one and three yards of the other one. So a fitted dress would probably be, uh, probably be enough fabric for that. And then the fuller skirt, the, the guy at Mood said he thought three yards would be sufficient. So we shall see, but let me know what you think. And let me know if you have a preference on my Vogue patterns or the Simplicity pattern, which one you'd like to see first, because I don't really have any particular order that I'm showing you these things in. These are my plans in general for 2023, and we'll see how I get inspired and motivated as the year moves forward. So another kind of theme for my sewing plans this year is to try new things. And Trying new things means moving out of my comfort zone of using commercial patterns and trying out some more independent pattern designers and seeing how things go. Because if you've been watching my channel, you know that I primarily have sewn with commercial patterns with mixed results. So 
Sometimes things work out pretty well. Sometimes I recognize that the ease is gonna be too great in whatever I'm trying to sew and I can size down. And then we have Butterick patterns, which were just a total disaster and didn't fit me at all. And Anna got two new makes. So I thought it might be fun to try some indie patterns. And I asked my grandma for some sewing books for Christmas, which she got me, of course. And the first one, which I found very, very inspirational, is um, called Everyday Style by Lada Jan's daughter. And she is Swedish. She lives in Brooklyn and she is a fabric designer. So the cool thing about her pattern designs is that they are basic silhouettes that have really bold fabric prints or not. So um, these are some of her styles. They're just basic shapes and you can use really bold prints with them as shown here on the cover. Now, as you know, I love color, I love print, and I like showing them off and a cleaner silhouette will lend itself to that much easier than something with a lot of seams and darts and, and you know, all that sort of thing. I have some fabric in my stash that I've been hanging on to, trying to find the right pattern. And I think that some of the patterns in this book will work really well for some fabrics that are in my stash. So one is this beautiful cotton print. This I believe is from Thailand. Um, my sister got it for me when she was on a trip. I do not have a lot of it, so I might have to make a top out of this, but I love this fabric. I just think it's gorgeous, and I think it'll be beautiful in just a very basic silhouette, which thankfully this book has plenty of. And since there are, you know, sleeveless and three-quarter length sleeve styles, I'm pretty sure I have enough fabric to do that. Another print I really love is this uh, lotus flower or lotus leaf. This is K Facet. I really love his prints. I love the color. I love the size. And frankly, I don't understand how this gets cut up into quilts, into these little tiny squares, because I just think it's so gorgeous all as one big piece. I've been holding on to this. I thought I might make um, a Japanese cocoon dress out of it that hasn't really manifested. So I might try this caftan look in this pattern because I think that would work too. We'll see if I have enough fabric. I mean, I don't remember how much yardage I have. This again is also from fabric.com. Rest in peace, fabric.com. We miss you. Last is this beautiful cotton linen blend. This is a butterfly print. I bought this a couple of years ago. This is also from Leo 9. And I love this fabric. It's so summery. It's really it has a nice weight. It's a little bit stiff. Um, so I think this will work for some of the designs in this book as well. And, you know, it's just a gorgeous print. I just, you know, I love prints. I love color. And I think that these three fabrics will work perfectly for some of the designs in this book. So I'm going to try that out. And because it's a whole different process, um, I have to trace off the patterns onto tracing paper, add seam allowances. It's a little bit more involved. It'll just be a different process. And I'm kind of looking forward to trying out something new and we shall see how that goes. The other type of pattern I want to try are the downloadable print it yourself PDF patterns. So I, subscribe to a lot of newsletters from indie pattern companies and get their emails regularly about, you know, different new designs or popular styles or, you know, ways to mix them up. And I haven't really seen something that would motivate me enough to number one, buy it. And number two, take the time to print it out, tape it together, cut it out, do all that kind of stuff. Until I got an email from Made by Ray in November, I believe, and her knit patterns were on sale and I was like well let me go see the knit patterns let me see what they've got and she had what might possibly be the perfect knit top now I downloaded the jade pattern which you can see here and I wear a lot of knit tops but I don't have any patterns for knit tops that aren't like a t-shirt pattern and the thing I love about this pattern is first of all there are three different sleeve lengths so I can make it a short sleeve three-quarter length or long sleeve there are two different necklines. There's the ballet neckline and a boat neckline, both of which I enjoy wearing. And then it has that really pretty curved hem, which means I don't have to tuck it in and it will look good when I wear a suit. 
I was really excited when I found this because <coughs> it was on sale, but also because it's this style of top that I've been looking for in a pattern and have not been able to find. So I did download it. I haven't printed it out yet because I haven't decided if I want to print it myself or if I want to take it to a copy shop. Thankfully, she provided both versions. So, um, you know, I have those options. I might print it out first and then try copy shop later. But I do have a bunch of knit fabric in my stash that has just been waiting for some use. And the first one is this purple fabric, which I used to sew a dress back in 21. It's one of my favorite dresses. It's purple knit dress. I love this color. And this was not an expensive fabric. I actually don't even know how long I've had this, but it will make a good muslin. So this will be like a good first attempt to make this top. And you can see it here in a bunch of different varieties. So this is part of the pattern instructions and it shows you some different uh, variations with the different necklines, the different sleeve lengths. And I think I'm gonna try it out in this, which will work well as a knit muslin. And then I have this other fabric, which is Marquita Stengel. It is silk moths, I believe, and they have little silk cocoons and little spools of silk thread. I bought this on fabric.com as well. And I just love this fabric. I love that it's silk moths. And I was gonna make a wrap dress, but I don't really wear wrap dresses. So I might end up using some of this to make a top with this pattern. So I'm super excited about that. I do have a couple of other solid color knits that were some bamboo knits that I was just testing out. So they are definitely up for this pattern. And I'm kind of excited about trying it out, seeing how it fits. And, and making some new tops to wear with my suits to work because I'm kind of getting tired of everything I already have in my wardrobe. Have you tried sewing with indie patterns either in books or with downloadable PDFs? I'd love to know your, about your experience, so please leave it in the comments below. One reason I had to clean out the sewing closet was to be able to access some of my vintage sewing machines. And this one is definitely the prize of my collection. This is my grandma's Singer Featherweight. And as I've mentioned before, I finally got a kit to overhaul it. It's got a new belt, it's got a new light bulb, it's got the little feet for the bottom, it's got all the oil and everything to get it up and running and ready to go. And thankfully my boyfriend is very mechanically inclined, so he is gonna help me with that process. And that will be one of the videos coming up in the next few months. And then I asked my grandma to come back to Sew Sew Lounge and sew some projects with me using her featherweight because the story she could tell about this little machine and everything that it's sewn. And I just think it would be really fun to do that with grandma and um, just have that experience and, you know, get her machine back up to its tip top shape. So it's perfect for sewing and we're gonna have a great time. Now, sewing with my grandma is not something I've never done before, but sewing on a vintage machine is. So that's another added bonus of using the Singer Featherweight is that I've never really sewn on a vintage machine and grandma is the perfect person to give me tips and pointers on the best way to do it. Sticking with the theme of the trying new things for my sewing adventures in 2023, I'm going to try menswear. Now, I've never sewn menswear. I do have some menswear patterns, and I think this is the year to really give it a go and see if I can do it. So two reasons behind this. One, I have a friend who's a YouTube creator, and he's working on this elaborate year-long project, and he asked if I would like to be involved, and I suggested a costuming aspect that I could handle. And so we decided that I'm going to make him a steampunk jacket to go along with his project. And at some point that will become a reality. So I was digging through my pattern stash and I found this really cool um, men's Victorian jacket kind of coat and a vest. And so this is definitely kind of a starting point for the design of that jacket. And of course I'll get with him and we'll have more updates throughout the year about what it's gonna look like and things like that. But that's one thing I'm super excited about. I haven't done any costuming in a while. And so that's kind of another aspect of, of doing things 
differently this year. And then because by the end of 2023, most of the Christmas parties I've gone to years past will be resuming after the pandemic of the past couple of years. And my boss is actually going to be throwing a Christmas party and I'm super excited about that. And I've thought about designing my own dress to go. We'll see if that actually happens. But for sure, I'm going to make my boyfriend a vest that will match my dress and we will see how that goes. So two basic kind of menswear, a vest and a jacket and possibly a vest or maybe just a jacket, we'll see. But these are some of my plans for trying new things and seeing how it goes with menswear. So what do you think? This is a lot of sewing to get done and inevitably I'm sure some other projects will pop up here and there throughout the year. And I hope you've enjoyed seeing my fabrics. Let me know which one you like best. And while you're leaving a comment, let me know what your sewing goals are or sewing plans in 2023. And if you've enjoyed this video, you're going to love this one.